Hey guys, uh, welcome back to Just The Watch. My name's Dave and this is the Budget Watch Collecting channel where I like to talk about everything related to watch collecting on a budget. Today I'm gonna be doing a comparison between tritium loom and traditional loom formulations like Swiss Superluminova or Seiko's Lumabrite and kind of break down what the difference is and what areas tritium is better or worse in. Now this video is, is featuring the supercharger from Aquatica Watches, which is a watch that has tritium loom inside of it. And this video is a segment of the full review that I did for that watch. So if you're interested in this watch, uh, I'll link the full review so you can check that out as well. But if you're just trying to figure out whether you need tritium or traditional loom, I think this video will be very helpful for you. Let's check it out. Now you probably noticed the includes paid promotion flag. That is because Aquatico did send me this watch for free and I do get to keep it. And there's a lot of impressive features on this thing. You're getting a thousand meters of water resistance, a bronze case, a ceramic bezel, um, sapphire crystals, which are all things that I have seen before. Um, but this one has one other trick up its sleeve that I haven't and that's the tritium loom on this. This is my first experience with tritium and I gotta say I'm really impressed at the performance of it. But I really want to put the tritium through its paces when I compare it to some of the other dive watches in my collection. So tritium is a type of illumination that glows constantly. It has some radiation that's powering it. So whereas most loom you measure its longevity in hours, tritium you measure it in years. With most tritium you should get a pretty strong glow for about 25 years out of the thing without needing to charge it with any ambient light. So that constant light is a really neat trick that tritium offers. Um, however, it is not initially as bright as good loom on other dive watches. So the big question in my mind was, if you charge up a, a watch with really awesome loom, how long is it gonna take before that loom fades to the point where it is dimmer than the tritium in this watch? And I was pretty surprised at the result. Okay, so this loom test is gonna be a little bit different than usual because I know that the tritium is eventually going to win out. So what I'm curious about is how long will it take before the tritium is brighter than the rest of these watches? And so I'm throwing this up against some of the best loomed watches in my collection. We've got kind of the standard here with the Seiko Samurai, which has Seiko's Lumabrite, um, Citizen Nighthawk, which I use in a lot of my tests. And then we have the Axios Ironclad, which is my current loom champion features uh, C3 X1 grade Superluminova, which is supposed to last an extra long time. Um, finally, a new one in my collection. This is the Zelos Horizons 12-hour uh, bezel, non-GMT version. Uh, this is a fully loom dial that features both X1 C3 and BGW9. I want to see, you know, sort of what the initial brightness comparison is. Um, we'll see how bright the tritium is. Uh, at initial brightness compared to these other ones, and then we'll see how long it takes before the tritium eventually beats out each of these. All right, so that's what we're gonna try and do. All right, so I've got this set up a little bit differently. Um, the way this works right now is the higher the watch is on the image, the brighter its markers are. So everything is fully charged right now and everything is brighter than the tritium. That's why you see the supercharger in the bottom left and everything up in the top right. And as the loom test goes, you're gonna see them start to change positions and we'll see when they cross to kind of figure out how long it lasts. So let's go ahead and start that up. And as you can see right there, we see our first one, which is the Nighthawk now at six minutes. So at six minutes, the markers on the Nighthawk are now at the same brightness as the tritium. And from here, they're just gonna to continue to get darker and the tritium will stay the same. If we continue to play this out, the next thing you're gonna see is that the Seiko Samurai right there, and then followed by the Zelos Horizons, and finally the Ironclad. So it only took 35 minutes for the Ironclad, which is the brightest watch in my collection, um, to dim to the point where it is no longer as bright as the tritium. Uh, so this is a very interesting thing. So basically, you know, if you're gonna be using the watch, you know, after dark um, for more than about a half an hour, um, the tritium is gonna give you better uh, brightness than pretty much any other loom out there. The initial brightness on some of these other ones will uh, will you know give you easier visibility, uh, but for long term use, the tritium is is going to be much better there. So it's fairly surprising results. I didn't quite expect it to uh, make the swap so quickly. But with that, uh, we're going to wrap it up. So thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time. Talk to you later. Bye.